love church, right? Church. We all, church. We all work at one. Yeah. We all go to one. Uh, we all say it differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you really do see this rise in our time of questioning, like, what is church? Mm. Is it this place I go? Do I have to go every week? Is it now online? And I can just do it at home, and it's with my small group of people. Mm. Uh, and especially, you know, as not just people who work at a church, but as Christians in this day and age, Mm -hmm. we have to go back to Scripture, wrestle with it again. What is the church? Mm -hmm. And how are we meant to live in that reality? So I guess that's just the first question is, hey, y'all, what's the church? Mm. Well, the the, the biblical definition, the Greek word is ekklesia, which literally just means uh, the gathering or the assembly the called out ones. Um, So the people of God, saved by grace, uh, who come out to to, to be together. Um, And so in a sense, uh, we say all the time, church is in a building and it's not a building. Uh, And it's not just a service that you come to, uh, but it is a gathering. Um, And so uh, that is the, that's the, you know, the Greek New Testament word for church. And... um, and yeah, it's been fascinating the last year. Like right. with, with the world going crazy and you know, the whole, like the listing of what's an essential service and what's a non-essential mm. service and where did church fit in all of that? Mm-hmm. And I think we're still answering the question now about this, you know, this, this called out gathering of God's people. Yeah. Like, you know, what format does that take? Yep. Can I watch every now and then and be a part of a church? Or... Right. So I guess with that, obviously it's taking on Many, it has taken on so many different forms since each of us have been alive. Uh, Clayton more than the rest of us, but love you. <laughs> but um, it's taken on many forms through the centuries. Mm-hmm. So I know like even amongst a lot of our friends, like church history study has like popped up a lot. We are nerding out about it. But why does it matter that we know that we do define church based on scripture? Mm-hmm. but also help define what church even is and how we operate in it based on church history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think it's super important because what most, you know, generations make the mistake of just reacting to the previous generation. Yep. Right. So, I mean, you know, church history, you can really, if you want to make it super simple, it's grace, legalism, grace, legalism, mm. grace, <laughs> legalism, <laughs> because we don't know how to walk that tension of both. Yeah. And so one generation will react, well, this generation was too legalistic, we're going to swing over to be more about grace, the grace mm-hmm. of God. And so I think it's so important to realize that, like, just because you didn't really like the way, you know, your grandparents worship gathering, yep. you know, the, their expression of church, yep. right? We just rejected that kind of stuff versus yep. figuring out, hey, really understanding why, mm-hmm. you know, why was that like that? You know, how did you really encounter the Lord that way? And so I think it, it is really helpful to get a long view of the arc of of the church that is still an institution that is still moving, that's been moving for thousands of years, has done some incredible things on the earth. Um, Because if you're too short-sighted, you're just going to reject, well, I don't like the way this church does it this way. I'm just going to do it like this. Rather than going back to the original design, Mm -hmm. back to the original blueprint art, what is this? Mm -hmm. What is is this supposed to be? A a, a called out group of people gathered, well, not just around food, not just, but around a a savior, around around the personhood of Jesus. Right. there's something very distinctive about that and should be. And if you're not careful, you're just too short-sighted and just react to the previous generation versus understanding, how did we get here? Yeah. Right. And, and how do we get back to what it is that God intended? Yeah. yeah. And I know Dan and Clayton, like, y'all have seen more of the church globally than <laughs> any of us. I think I could say that pretty confidently. Yep. Um, how does that inform currently right now as, like, the definition of church and what it looks like is a little bit under attack and a little bit under discussion— how has that informed your viewpoint now and as you lead and pastor and teach and what that looks like for the church right now? Wow. I've been to 50 countries now. I've seen people <laughs> right. meet in basements under acacia trees in the, in the, you know, in the jungles of Kenya. Um, went to Russia right after communism collapsed, literally wow. a year after communism com- collapsed. We went in on the tail end of the first Billy Graham crusade and, and saw people running and knocking each other down to get the Bibles we were giving away. Wow. Wow. So it's hard for me to think of um, church 
like an American. Mm -hmm. I, I more so think of church like a global Christian. Yep. I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of a mutt. I really do. I feel <laughs> like I'm a, I feel like a, not an orphan, but more of a mutt because yeah. I, I've, I've seen so many Christians gather and assemble. I've seen them do um, uh, foot washing and the Lord's Supper and baptism in different ways. And so for me, when I think about what church is right here, right now, I love it. I've seen people literally yes. give their lives mm. for it. It's a foreign concept for me to hear someone who claims the name of Christ as Savior and Lord tell me, I don't need to go to church to have a relationship with Jesus. I don't get it. Mm. I get it, but I can't, I can't get there. Mm -hmm. um, if you love me, you have to love my wife. Mm -hmm. Yes. You love Jesus, you have to love his bride. And just right. in, a, in a previous series, we heard from Pastor Dan, what is the church? The church is the bride of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. The church is a beacon, a right. city on a hill. And those are three ways that, that we're um, shown who we are as the church. We're, we're the body of Christ. So Jesus has left us. We now have the Holy Spirit. He is in heaven interceding for us. But his body, his actual body, that does the work of ministry mm -hmm. on the earth right now is the church, yeah. the gathered sisters and brothers, the family of God. And when he comes back, this imagery of, of the marriage of the lamb to the bride, what is the bride of Christ? It's the church, it's us. Mm. Uh, th there is some deep mystery there, but, le but let's, not, let, let's not just kind of um, dismiss the church by going, oh, there's just so much mystery. No, there is some mystery, but there's also some concrete reality. Yeah. <laughs> we need to be together. Yep. And I'm all about being safe, and I'm all about wearing masks and, and distancing socially when we need to for the sake of loving our neighbor. But that cannot be an excuse for us to, to slough off, not the responsibility alone, but the joy of being in this beautiful, mysterious, yet concrete reality we are called to be the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the beacon that shines a light to the world. Yeah. Man, I, I get to a visceral place. <laughs> you can tell. I haven't been to as many uh, countries as Clayton has. 47. Uh, <laughs> 42 and counting. And I, the, the, um, uh, you see it all over the world. And you read about it throughout history. Like, and, I, and, I've, and I've wondered to myself, with the price some people pay yes. to gather together, like, like, why? Because like, I, I, I've been in countries before where, where you literally can't text about church. Mm. Mm. You, gotta, you use code. Because at any point, you know, government officials, police can come into, the, in, so into that room, take everyone away, arrest with no cause. Uh, I've been in other countries where, and I remember um, preaching one time in a, in a country where there was some crazy traffic. And I remember... Um, uh, you know, finding out people would sit in traffic three, four hours to come to this, like, you know, Friday night revival gathering. Yeah. Like, why would you, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when, when it drops below 50 here, it's like, oh, it's too cold, we've got to stay inside, we'll watch on. And I'm like, and, 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 and I just come to the conclusion, there must be some kind of sense that there is, it's, it's a family gathering, that me not being yeah. there will be noticed. And number two, it's life. Yeah. Whatever it's costing me, what I'm getting, Yep. Is, is worth more. And, and just somewhere along the line, um, and I've experienced this in the last couple of years living in America, um, you know, I found a lot of people who don't see the gathering uh, as, as the life-giving space as Jesus, you know, intended it to be. Um, and, and maybe I'm to blame as well that people don't feel that connection mm -hmm. or their family. Yeah. Their presence is celebrated and their absence is felt. Yep. Um, Can I ask, like, what, what is the difference coming from, like, Australia to when you arrived here, experiencing church in Australia to here? Like, what were those differences that you experienced? It's, it's not just, it's not just, and it's, it's just, I think every, every culture is going to infuse, and that's the, I don't know why God designed it this way, and, <laughs> but he just designed that he, he would incarnate into the earth, and somehow, you know, culture would impact yep. in the way that the church was expressed, but... Um, uh, I'll say this, there are only three fast food joints in all of Australia. We got McDonald's, <laughs> we got Burger King, and we got KFC, that's it. Um, everything is 
everything really, you, you, you cook at home a lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to spend a lot more time, you know, making your meal. I think culturally here, we like things that are quick and mm. fast. Mm. And things convenient. that are convenient and fit around our schedules. Yep. And, and people love church and everyone claims that they're a part of a church, especially around here. Mm -hmm. uh, but their interaction with their church is much more a reflection of just the societal norm of culture, yeah. culture, convenience, quick, yep. you know. Well. But you said something multiple times that I do want to point out because I didn't, I grew up going to church every week. Yeah. But I had no idea that it was supposed to be like a family. Not as a catchphrase, mm -hmm. yeah. but as a wow. theological statement yeah. that when we joined the faith, we joined a family. That's what you see in Acts is they shared their possessions. They right. looked out for one another. They, they didn't give up meeting together because what would they do without each other? Yep. Right. You know, so they, they needed one another. And I think that's what even the attack on the, the nucleus family you know, that, that there's an attack on family in general. Right. But what you see Jesus do in John 19, at, he's hanging on the cross and he looks at his mother and he says, behold your son. And he looks at his friend and mm -hmm. says, behold your mother. And he, he makes family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And wow. we somehow in, in the years and in the convenience and in, in the um, church as a place you go to, we lost the king. You are my brother. Not mm -hmm. like, hey, brother, mm -hmm. but like, my, my brother, and Clayton is my brother, and that's my yep. sister. And to lock eyes with one another on a Sunday and say, don't you give up. Right, yeah. Because I'm not going to give up on you. Don't right. you get, yep. how was that last night? Did right. you? Right, right. You didn't, did you? Right. You don't, we don't mm -hmm. do that. Yep. You know, but when you're living in a house with somebody, mm -hmm. it's harder to hide. Mm, it's really good. Mm -hmm. And I think if we see the church house as more of a family house, Come on. then it's a lot harder to, to just... To just hide, look, here I am in my my nice clothes and in my yeah. the things you say, and it's like, no, no, no. I know you well enough to know that's not what's actually going on. Right. And we've missed that, not only that reality, but I think that desire for family is like, don't get up in my business. Mm -hmm. That's what we're supposed to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be up in your grits as mm -hmm. much as you are are in mine yep. in a trusted family. Relationship. Well, when you love each other, you trust and you, you, yeah. you expect that. Like, you expect that from your family. Yep. You know, what I've noticed um, in traveling to other countries and the church in America, I love the church in America. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things, like, I can't, I can't get with people when, when they start to just give all of the dirt and the trash and the negativity about the church because I know too much, yes. I've seen too much mm -hmm. good that the church does in the world. Yep. However, one thing I have noticed, and this is just a cultural difference, it's, it, it's not right or wrong, it just is what it is. America is a rugged, Western, individualistic mm. society. We have been for a long, long time. Um, Asian cultures, African cultures, Latin American cultures, even some European cultures, specifically Eastern European cultures, are much more family-oriented, mm -hmm. and they're much more community-based. Mm -hmm. And so in America, because there are so many choices, yeah. like the fast food joints, way more than three. Yeah. There's way more than three within five minutes a year. Yeah. There's so many choices. And in a lot of ways, we just get spoiled. Yes. Just say it. Jesus we can it. listen to our favorite podcast. We mm -hmm. can watch it later online. We can listen to a worship uh, playlist on, on, our, on our phone. Why do I have to go to church on Sunday? There's just a, an individualistic mindset that oftentimes yeah. keeps us from fully engaging into this beautiful family of God. And for us as a church, you know, um, you asked Dan when he, you know when you came to America mm -hmm. and, and joined our team and joined this family here. We began around 2016, 2017 as a church to really sense the spirit shifting yep. a lot of stuff in us. Yep. You know the first thing I remember of, about that season of shifting in our church, and we're coming up on five years now of where we've really sensed, sensed the Holy Spirit doing some things. Mm -hmm. The one thing that stands out the most to me: no ordinary family. Yep. Mm -hmm that there's really a family. It's yep. really community now. It's not just you make an individual decision for Jesus. It's no, we're here. Yeah. We're together. Mm -hmm. And if somebody in this body's hurting, somebody's going to break their neck to get to them to help them. Yep. If somebody needs a house to live, somebody's going to be opening the door to their guest bedroom. Yep. If somebody didn't have a car, there'll be three people lined up to get a car to them. Yep. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's what I sense the Lord doing in our church. Yeah. That's great. That, 
it doesn't mean the individual is going away, but yep. that the individual is a part of something bigger. Mm-hmm. And that family is this thing we call an ordinary family because it's not ordinary. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. So how then do we encourage our brothers and sisters mm-hmm. that I'm telling you, church, you need to be in it. There's this whole, you know, deconstruction is a movement across, we can't get into all that. But just this, I don't need that, I don't need this, I don't need that. So how do we, the whole truth and love thing, again, Mm -hmm. encourage our brothers and sisters, this is a place you need to be, this is something that you need to, regardless of how long you have to wait in traffic or what it may cost you, Mm -hmm. that you need to commit to. Mm -hmm. I keep looking at you, Sam, because you're a campus (laughs) pastor. I mean, this is like... You know, I... Well, it's, it's, you know, in love, it's like, you know, you can try that on your own as long as it's, it's just not going to pan out for you mm. because you just weren't designed that way at all. Um, I really think it's just this idea for me, because I think it's like you were talking about the consumeristic mindset um, that I've been so convicted of like really beginning to ask, like, you know, I'm part of our church house, but also, man, connecting within our community, within our cities, the, the corporate body of Christ. I mean, it's something I'm, I'm so passionate about because Jesus' bride is his bride. It's not yeah. the Jesus' Baptist bride and Jesus' Pentecostal bride, <laughs> right? You know, and I, I just, it is one of those things that there is a, yes, I can have my personal relationship with Jesus, but there is something that comes into play in a corporate worship gathering, like God's enthroned on the praises of his people. Yeah. It's amazing, but also when you just get gathered around some people that you're trying to journey life with, and really, like, why the diversity conversation in the church. Mm-hmm. You know, that you're missing out on something mm. if you don't get to understand, you know, Clayton's quiet time being different than mine yeah. or the way Hakeem views a scripture, the way we, we think about these things, this idea of mutual submission yep. in the body of Christ, that yep. we exalt the name of Jesus. That is the thing. And then we can kind of come around and, and have different interpretations of how that plays out into our life and that we grow in that together. Mm-hmm. And you're just missing out on something in your life. And I think that, you know, I, I went with Clayton, really cautious talking poorly about the church, but really it's, the church is one of the most diverse organizations and yeah. one of the most diverse things in the world. It yeah. is. It is. And, I lo- and, and yep. learning, why is it like that? Right. Yeah. Why do they worship like that? Why do they, you know, um, it's something that marked, you know, some of the early Christian was they wanted to know not preferential worship styles, but how do you encounter God that way? Mm. Mm. How do you encounter God through that style of worship music? <laughs> so it's just such a, I would just say, man, you're just missing out on a, a just like we would say, we need diversity. Yep. Right? We don't need conformity. We need diversity in society. We know that. You need that in the church too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the body of Christ is missing out on something if you're not there. Right? Yep. That's right. I'm missing something. Yeah. You know, so you bring good, something right? to, to the table that we are missing and that you're leaving something on the table by not showing up. Yep. Right? And I'm down for deconstruction as long as, 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 long as the purpose is to, is to construct something beautiful. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I've personally said to people, if you don't find connection, community, shepherding, teaching, growth, uh, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit at New Spring Church, find that space. Yes, please. And it might, be, it might be a small group with 20 people gathering together. It might be another church. That's, um, uh, I, think, I think we just have to say for the people in the back <laughs> that, that the church is more a family uh, than it is um, a club you buy membership to. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is more a body uh, than it is a, um, a loose social interaction yes. um, that, that, that meets some needs every now and then, but by and large is easily left to the side of your yeah. life. Um, uh, it is essential because Jesus designed us in such a way uh, to thrive within the context of relationships, but especially uh, godly relationships mm-hmm. um, in the ecclesia. Yeah. Yep. There's two things there. Um, <clears throat> one, that there is one of the favorite, my favorite things that the Spirit has done in New Spring over the past few years is expanded New Spring Church to this kingdom mentality. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Beautiful. I want. Oh, I want the church down the street to win. Because those are my brothers and sisters. I want the churches in Florence Mm -hmm. to thrive because those are my brothers and sisters. Mm. Um, And it's, I keep thinking of, we talk about like planting churches, Mm -hmm. right? Um, I'll just share this with y'all, with whoever watched this. I had a dream Mm. a year or two ago. 
It was these massive trees, like huge, um, uh, like oaks. And, or I'm not, you know, a botanist, so they could have been something else. <laughs> Redwoods. Potentially cedars. Cedars. <laughs> of Lebanon. And it was, one of them was cut down. Mm. And I started crying. Mm. And I was like, this is, why am I crying over this tree? And I felt the Holy Spirit said, look in your hand. And I looked and there was a seed. And I said, and mm. the Holy Spirit said, drop it. I dropped it. Mm. And this vine started growing. It covered the uh, stump. All the rest of the trees, it covered the whole forest. I was like, That's, what was that about? And I really, I felt like I heard the Holy Spirit say, I'm replanting my church in America. Yes, come on. And we've had these massive church plants, that church down there, that church down there. Yep. And what you see him doing over these past few years with everything being disrupted you, is Lord. a reuniting, yes. mm. almost indicative of, I'm the vine, mm -hmm. you are the branches. Yes. Yes. That God is reuniting his church <laughs> yes. across America yep. because he knows yep. yes. it is through his church mm -hmm. that the kingdom will come, that the mm -hmm. kingdom of darkness will be driven out. Mm -hmm. And I'm yes. cool with New Spring being a branch. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. And not just a massive church plant Amen. disconnected from everyone Thank you. else. Uh, I feel compelled to say this before this uh, beautiful conversation comes to a conclusion. My first trip to India... I met the godliest man I've ever met in my life, besides uh, my own father. His name is M.A. Thomas. He's with the Lord now. And all of us Americans were praying in this large uh, prayer gathering there in India for protection for the church in India. Protection, mm -hmm. protection, protection. Because mm -hmm. that's what we pray for. Mm -hmm. Lord, protect my family, protect my house, protect my people I love, protect me. Mm -hmm. And finally, I think Dr. Thomas had just had enough of it after a couple of days, and he stopped us. <laughs> In his big booming voice, I won't, I won't dare try to, uh, try to do it. But he said, um, "My brothers and sisters, thank you for praying for us. But I want you to change your prayer. Don't pray for protection for yes. our church here. Pray for persecution. Wow. Because when we are persecuted, <laughs> it makes no sense. But yeah. we grow. We grow deeper, and we grow taller." We grow wider. Yep. Yes. Pray for persecution. Thank if you, the year we have experienced with COVID and political division and racism rearing its ugly head that's been there all along, if it's doing anything, it is purifying Amen. the church yes. right now. Absolutely. And it's helping us get back. Billy Graham said it. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. <laughs> yep. so what is the main thing? It's the gospel of Jesus Christ and loving people yep. in his Set name. The church, and I believe that that is where we are right now yep. as yep. the church, not just New Spring Church. Yep. Oh, and by the way, doesn't it feel good, guys? And lady, to be a part <laughs> of a church, it, to have no pressure to make a name for New Spring Church. Mom. Yep. To just make a name for Jesus yes. Christ in the church. Yes. That's yep. it. Yes. That's what, amen. That 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 word, that 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 was prophetic. Mm. And um, you know, mm. may the grace of God seriously yeah. bring that up that, that to pass. Yeah. Um, you know? Amen. Lord, we agree with the promise of Jesus. Mm -hmm. mm. That you would build your church mm -hmm. and the gates of hell would not be over, able to overcome it. Yep. Mm. Help us to be that kind of church that stands firm on that promise. Yep. That is not about making a name for ourselves. That is as, as much for the church down the street as the church that we get to be a part of. Because yes. it will take all of us for your kingdom to come, your will to be done on earth. Right now, Lord, let it break out as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name.